Sometimes we wake up in the morning feeling very sad and also very grumpy. But have you realized that it's a new day, a new day for opportunities? So, why don't you get up and make the best use of the new day? On that program, I, on that note, I welcome you to your program, New Day, the voice of the new generation. My name is Tuwason Gilbert. Well, uh, Tuwason, that was quite a very beautiful intro. You know, and very it was, lengthy. Yeah, it was, was beautiful and, you know, every word there made sense. You know, exactly why I wake up in the morning grumpy. It's a new day. The mistakes of yesterday are I, I in the past and I think that you know every time we wake up every morning we should go out there and venture into something. There's a saying that says nothing ventured, nothing gained. Exactly. exactly. So stay inspired, it's a new day and you can achieve many, many things despite your past failures. Yes, so on that note it's time for us to go for our break and when we come back we'll tell you so much more that we have for you today. Please stay with us. Wanna be in the know? Tune into the show. Start a new day now when you zoom. Touching the work and career ends up in the play zone. Take luck to entertain, inspire to make you feel at home. And it's all about you. It's all about you. New day. of technology and continuous development of internet compatibility with mobile devices has continued to bear profitable fruits. For instance, internet radio is gaining popularity as various applications are being created for transmission. Of all the current radio applications in Africa, one that is arguably the leading internet radio provider is the Jandus Radio. Jandus Radio provides people from all over the world access to media content, news and music in Nigeria, the Caribbean, US and other countries in Africa. Jandus Radio offers immediate mobile access information so people are always kept updated about current events and music. With it, radio stations that stream online are capable of worldwide access via the internet. Jandus Radio is not just a radio station, it is a platform to assist in promoting online and live radio stations that offer African and Caribbean content. The success of Jandus Radio has seen increased national and international listenership of Nigerian radio stations through the mobile platform. The integration on social media allows the listener to share their radio experience with their social network. Social media encourages listener interaction with radio and increases listening time and user engagement with the radio station. Services also offered by the app are advertising and social media promotion, events promotion and artist promotion. So you have Janda's radio there, and uh, it's a smart hat, but I would call it radio on the go. 
Oh yes, uh, Dan- Dandos Radio is Radio on the Go, like Sports rightly pointed out. You know, and it's quite easy to download. Every, almost everybody I know, mm-hmm. I know, almost everybody out there, almost everybody I know has Dandos Radio on his uh, phone, and it's quite good because here's the thing: you can listen to different radio stations, different in, countries, exactly. Yeah. So beautiful. There are even some local radio stations down Dandos Radio app. So. Mm-hmm. You know, the fact that you don't have those small phones that you have to get earpiece for and all yeah, of it, you can exactly. just download Janus Radio and on your smartphone and still be using it. So yeah. it's quite good. I think yeah. I like that innovation. Yeah, very, very innovative, I would say. Okay, this is also to let you know that you can actually be a part of this program. All you have to do is to be our partner on the social media platform. Our Twitter is at New Day TV Show. And um, for our Facebook is New Day TV Show. And yes, you can always send us your emails mm-hmm. to newdaytvshow at gmail.com. So send in those messages, your tweets, your Facebook messages, and your emails, and you'll be sure we'll get to read it on the show as well as we'll treat the emails that, you know, have to do with. Some people send personal emails, you know, so we have to deal with one. Like the one who sent an email one time that she has a uh, she has a song. Yeah. She wants us to edit the song. So emails Ivan, like that. What about that person them. that said she likes you and she was asking whether you're single? Oh, uh, okay, he's well, single, just in case. No, 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 you'll see. Being single is a technic. No, there's a, there's a technicality. Let's move on. No, mm-hmm. technically, see, I'm not see single. philosophy again. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but you can try your best, though. Eh? Yes, you can try your best, man. Eh? If you if you if you impress me, eh? come on, I'll come over, babe. <laughs> God have mercy. <laughs> Okay, now, um, what we have for you today on our Inspire Me segment, this is somebody that is actually doing very well. He's doing something that is not common, but this guy, if I should use that word, is into waste management and recycling. You know, sometimes when we use those things, we throw them away. Like believe, you. <laughs> yeah, like believe me, we have somebody who's actually turning this waste into something very beautiful. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's a good one. I can't wait to get into that segment because, you know, I've read and research a lot about waste and recycling and that i i remember vividly there's this house in uh mexico that was yeah. built with bottles recycled yeah, yes. bottles so fantastic and as well on today's milestone love you that are driving no wahala we have your milestone today oh yes and on the smart life segment we'll be talking about security mm. yes are we security conscious you will get to find out on our smart life segment so don't forget the show is still new day on NTA and it's the wind up edition. So all you have to do, like you said earlier, on sending those messages and make the show richer because it's your show and we can we're only here to inspire you to go out there and aspire your desires. Good, it's time for us to go for a break now. And when we come back, we'll be going straight away into the inspire me segment. Please stay with us. Wanna be in the know? Tune to the show. It's called a new day, now in your zone. Touching the work and career. Ends up in the play zone. Take luck to end things, but it'll make you feel at home. And it's all about you. It's all about you. New day. Okay, it's nice to have you back with us. Now, this is the Inspire Me segment, and we'll be moving straight to our guest. It's time for us to introduce our guest. And with us in the studio is Mr. Okmai Sowo Adewale. Is that right? Yes, it is. It's nice to have you with us today. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, what is, you, you're actually into waste management and recycling. Yes. I bet you, not many of us, <laughs> not many of us <laughs> who want to venture into that. No, 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 no not many of us. <laughs> and um, it's, by the way, I must really commend you. That's a very good thing to start. Yes, mm. it is. Is it really profitable? Um, it depends on what you call profitable. Mm, it depends on because what um, initially when we started, we were looking at this more like um, something that comes out of passion. Yeah. Okay. So uh, then from then we looked at the sustainability of the, of the company. Good. So now, yes, we're looking at profits, okay. but the first thing that comes is, is your passion. Mm. So we have a passion for the environment. Mm. Oh. A passion for the environment. Yes. But yes, that's trying to make sure that the environment is as green as possible yes. and things like that. Mm, lovely. Oh, well, that's nice. You know, so, uh, yeah, we'll talk about profit now, but tell us more about the waste management and recycling business as a whole in Nigeria. Okay, it's relatively a new industry. Okay. Yeah. I started this company in 2010. Okay. But I started um, from the grassroots, you know, sorting out waste. Then in 2011, I established um, Oliver Adam mm. uh, Limited. Thank you. So, um, waste recycling is actually a new concept in Nigeria. It's something that is catching on with um, companies and um, households, but it's, um, there's still a lot that can, that can be done. Okay. I mean, um, for Lagos, you have 11,000 tons of waste being produced every day. Really? Wow. Yes. <laughs> As much, you. It's, it's, it's quite a lot, and something has to be done about it. Mm. So, um, waste management still has a long way to go. Mm, has a long way to go. Now, talking about waste management, I'm sure we have categories and things mm -hmm. like that. So, what are the categories that existed or still existing now? Um, I'll just um, uh, categorize them into what I call collectors. Okay. Um, the collectors are basically um, people that collect some certain types of wastes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then we have what we call your recycler. Okay. Then recycler is the person that turns it into maybe raw materials or like um, finished products. Then you have the end user. So waste recycling or waste management is actually a, is actually a loop. So it starts from um, where the waste is produced from, then it goes to where it's collected, then it goes to the recycler, then the end user, then all the way back again. Mm. Good, nice. Okay, and you, Elian, you just said, you said something about Lagos producing uh, about eleven thousand tons of waste on a daily basis, yes. and that's quite much, you know, for a city as you know, in terms of geography now, small like Lagos, you know, that, that that's eleven thousand tons of waste is quite much. How how are the, how is the Lagos state, you know, managing to make sure that the waste doesn't overspill? Oh wow! Are they are they curtailing it? Lagos State is actually um, at the forefront of waste management. Oh. I mean, I really commend um, LOMA for the work that they're doing. Okay. They actually support recyclers. I mean, um, for the first time, we have what we call um, a transloading station. We have what we call an, a materials recovery facility. All these facilities are being supported by Lagos State. Uh, we also have um, the buyback scheme that the Lagos State government is getting into. Um, a lot of waste is still being generated. There are not enough people in the waste management business as it is. So there's still, we need private individuals to come in and support the state for waste management. Okay. And um, you know, talking about waste management, I'm aware that many homes don't really know how to well. manage their waste and things like, are you guilty? Um, are guilty as charged? I, okay. <laughs> well, I dispose my waste. Uh. I have like this big, there's this big black nylon. Oh yeah. Like, yeah okay. All right. Every week, every week they come to pack it. So. There are better ways of doing things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I mean, how can you, I mean, what's the advice you would give to people? How they can actually dispose yeah. of their waste to recycle and things like that? Okay. Um, first, there needs to be um, what I call a sensitization. Okay. okay. Um, we need to have different bins whereby we categorize our wastes either into plastic, paper, bottles, and your consumables, like um, vegetable matter. Okay. So, and um, we need different um, PSP operators to collect the different categories of waste. Because yeah. waste, waste management should actually start from the source. Yes. That's one of the problems that we're facing right now. Then we need the government to get in into enforcement, yeah. because without enforcement, then, you know, um, it won't happen. I'm guilty of that as well, <laughs> you know, because um, we try as much as possible to separate our waste. Mm. But um, it all ends up in the same truck same anyway. Yes. So there really has to be segregation of waste yeah. right from the household. Then there has to be education from the schools, mm -hmm. you know, because um, from my own experience, I found out that um, children are more passionate yes. about new concepts yes. rather than the older ones. Mm. 
So if we have a culture whereby the children are being sensitized on how to manage waste, then you see that it will grow on their parents as well. Yes. So sooner or later, everybody will catch on to segregating waste right yeah. from the household. Yeah, I, I mean, talking about children, from my little cousin's experience, you know, I told him, I said, if you want to throw away bottles, put them here. If you want to throw away um, waste, food and things like that, yeah. put them here. So one of his aunties, was doing the wrong thing. <laughs> and I heard this guy shouting and screaming, no, Auntie Bosu said it is this place, it is that place. And you know, I was trying to tell him that if you do it right, at the end of the week, I'm going to give you ice cream. Maybe it was the ice cream that was inspiring. <laughs> exactly. Him, or but, the but, but idea. But you, but, you, but you got something to inspire Exactly. Yeah. So from what you say, I mean, even the kids should, you know, if you're able to educate the kids, yeah. then one way or the other, they will educate the adults. Yeah, exactly. It has come to that, to that level yes, now. <laughs> well, he, he's talking about uh, the different segregations of waste management. There is, there, there's a short supply of humans, you know, workers. And so what are you doing to, or what is being done to, in, to increase the level of interest in terms of waste management and recycling? Because if we don't have a lot of people working on it, like you said, the waste will still end up the same place. Hmm. Well, we have to look at it from two different perspectives. First, when you look at the household level, like I explained, when the, when the normal household people are, are interested in waste yeah. segregation, that, that would take care of segregation at the household level. Then we have what we call curbside recycling, which a lot of other companies are doing. So people actually get paid to segregate the wastes that end up on the streets. Then uh, we also have what the buyback initiative that I spoke about whereby, for example, pure water is being sold by, um, by some companies and you know, government parasite sales as well. So um, we recyclers, we, we buy from, from, those, from those places. Um, if there's compensation <laughs> and is adequate, you see that uh, waste to get, uh, you, uh, naturally people would come up that will separate the waste. You will have enough workers. Mm -hmm. So apart from sensitization, there has to be support and there has yeah. to be compensation. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I was talking about the workers now in general, you know, what's what's the uh, financial benefits and as well the uh, what 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 is being put in place to safeguard their health? Because this is what we're talking about. You know, sometimes you know, I've when because I, I live where where I live, every Wednesday they come, okay. you know, the private agencies come and they pick up. That was I, I, there was a time I saw a young chap. You know, he just had one glove, the, okay. those long ones. The other one was. He had socks instead. <laughs> you know, so what are you doing to you know make sure that these people the hazard doesn't affect them? Okay. Um, from my own experience, yeah. um, we have what we call safety gear. Okay. That every worker must have. And um, when you talk of the PSP operators, I think um, the operators um, should have their own safety gear as well. Yeah. Whether they are enforced in in their usage, that's a different matter entirely. Um, what I'll say is that um, what th we have what we call the materials recovery facility, which is actually taking over people segregating waste yeah. manually. You know, the material recovery facility is um, whereby the waste gets dumped and it gets separated according to the different categories of waste that we have. Um, it can be done um, via electronic means. So you have like a conveyor belt whereby the waste yeah. are separated, or it can be done manually as well. So as time goes on, technology would take over all what you're saying. Then um, when the segregation comes into line as well, a lot of those things that you're seeing would also stop because you'll pick up bottles differently, you'll pick up yeah. vegetable matters differently and all that uh, differently. So with time, it's gonna get a lot better. Okay, now talking about, we're still on recycling and things like that, but can you just mention those things that you recycle, like just yeah. be mentioning them? Oh wow, we recycle um, pure water, Okay, um, sachets. Sachets, okay. Yeah, we recycle um, a paper, as in a paper cartons. Okay. We also recycle um, Tetra Pak wastes. Okay. Um, we recycle plastics, your bread mm. nylon, your uh, biscuit wrappers, yeah. your... Soft drinks bottle as well? Um, yes, we recycle that as well, mm. the pet bottles. Pet bottles. Pet bottles. Yeah. So um, basically we recycle um, paper and plastics mm. for now. Okay. okay, so that's to say that if I take a bottle of a drink, if, if I take a bottle of drink now, that bottle, that empty bottle that maybe somebody would just throw away, away, is actually something useful to your company. Yes, it is Good. a lot of money. Okay, so <laughs> if, if, if I if I have say 
100 bottles now mm. and i want to give it to you i want to give it to another private uh, waste management agency is there any return for me um yes but not not on, a not, a, not on 100 bottles <laughs> <laughs> so how many bottles uh, because uh, pet bottles are actually very light, we deal with mm -hmm. weights. Mm -hmm. We buy in kilograms. Oh, okay. So uh, it depends on the weight. A kilogram mm -hmm. goes for how much? Of pet bottles? Yes. Um, between 30 naira. 10? Like 30 naira. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> not bad, not bad. Okay. You know, from what you've said now, I mean, if a parent is listening, yeah. I would. I mean, I would rather tell the child that, have you heard what uncle said now? So keep gathering all those all bottles. Those bottles just put and them at the end of the day, we are going to give you 30 naira and that is going to cover for biscuits or something. You know, those are ways of doing it. <laughs> anyway, thank you. It's time for us to go for a break now. And when we come back, we still have with us Mr. Okpesowo Adewale. is our guest on the Inspire Me segment. And we're talking about waste management and recycling. Please stay with us. Welcome back. It's still a new day, and we still have Mr. Adewale in the studio with us. And uh, we're still talking about waste management and recycling. And Mr. Adewale brought something down to the studio that his his company have recycled. And uh, well, to us only, if you lift yours up, this this is a what do you call it again? Uh, that's a flower. A flower pot. pot. A, a flower cover made from paper. You know, paper. Look, you, you can look at it. I don't know if the camera can, you know, zoom in closer and show our, our viewers at home. But so much you can see the the, the waste. You can still feel some see of the paper. This exactly. is like a newspaper, and it still has something like toss or something. Maybe yeah. toss or a word from this the is, paper. This is lovely, and people can. These things go for some good box. <laughs> 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 and it's light as well. It's light. You can see one hand. It's very very light. It's not heavy. So. And this is supposed to be a dust bin, yes. is that right? Yes. Wow. And yes. if I ask you, how long will it take to make this? Uh, it doesn't take too long at all. Uh, the um, takes less than 30 minutes. Really? Oh. Yes. 30 minutes. To do the dust bin? Yes. Oh, good. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I and think we have to, we'll to say after the show, we need to... <laughs> <laughs> but if, <laughs> I, if I can ask you this question, I don't know yeah. whether you can give me an answer. Okay. okay. How many newspapers will you use to get this? Um, we actually, it's it's not made out from newspaper. Okay. It's made from tetra pack um, cartons. All right. Okay. So uh, you're like a dancer juice, your chivita. Okay, and things oh, like yes, that. Thank you. Things like that. Okay. So um, and it's um, the we 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 make um, panels out of it, oh and okay. it's based on weights. Oh. Okay. So um, each panel weighs like 35 kg mm. which we now cut to size to make the dustbins and the mm. flower pot cover or any type of furniture okay. that we want to make oh, okay. good right. well done yeah, thank thank you. You. And by the way do you have people training on the i mean training yeah, if people want to train or learn about all of these things yeah we welcome people if they want to train yeah, yeah. and um so that means that i mean i want to believe you're not the only person doing this you have <laughs> it's a couple of people working yes, together definitely. to get this definitely we have a couple of questions on social media already uh this one is asking you know apart from making useful products like furniture or waste what other benefits are derived from recycling oh wow a lot of benefits um one, you have a cleaner environment. Mm -hmm. uh, two, you have um, a um, what, what, what I call a sustainable environment as well. Mm -hmm. So instead of cutting down trees and using them to make furniture, we can actually use things like this yeah. to make furniture. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then um, also the benefit of recycling is that um, it keeps uh, people off the streets. Yeah. It keeps people employed. It's gen it generates uh, funding. So there, there, there's so many benefits from recycling. Mm, okay. so, many be so many benefits, excuse me. All right. Okay. Uh, so it's talking about uh, the, the benefits of recycling. Someone uh, is asking on Facebook as well. He is, is, is quite interested. You know, he says he wants to learn about recycling. That Are there schools where he can go to and learn about this trade? Um, not that I'm aware of okay. as a course. I, I don't think recycling has been taught. Well, maybe maybe a professional course, maybe a couple of months and he's done and <laughs> he gets pitched up. 
recycling days. recycling for me must start first as, as, as a passion yeah, mm -hmm. you must have a passion for recycling because it's a lot of hard work it's a lot of um, research as well so um, when you say you want to learn yes you can learn from from us mm -hmm. you can learn from um, individuals yeah. you can also do your own research on on, on the internet okay. so you can also learn. I started uh, doing my own research from the internet before mm -hmm. I ventured out there Okay. So you can start that way. Okay, okay. Uh, we just saw pictures on the screen there of you know of, of uh, recycles or so waste you know uh, tractors picking up the waste you know trying to recycle okay. trying to get the things that could be recycled out of the waste. Uh, it was quite good, you know. Uh, I've been to a few dump sites. You know, <laughs> when you're in school eh, and they give you some practicals like that. Mm -hmm. Remember when I was preparing for my work? Yeah, because I did my senior secondary school in Nigeria. I was preparing for my work. And we had to look for a rabbit. And one of my friends was telling me, the boy will go away, does be deal, we'll go see all the okay. So I've been to a couple of dumb sites and it's not good. Um, when you say the dumb site is not good, I don't see that way. Oh, well, okay. some of them are actually close to res to residential areas, you know, okay. where people have shops, where people live, stuff like that. Look, look, look at this one. This is, uh, you can see the tires, they're dead everywhere. Man, how do you guys manage to ransack through all of those pile of debt and get something out of it? We actually don't do the ransacking. The uh, like, 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 like I said, um, there are there are people that we call collectors. Yeah. So the collectors actually do um, do all the sorting. We actually mm -hmm. we don't call it ransacking. So we call it sorting. <laughs> those collectors so. are trying. <laughs> those guys are the real heroes. Yes, there. they're the real heroes. I've okay. I've met um, quite a few of them. And they, they, they actually have families, they have, they've built houses, they, you know, they've, they made a wow, living. Really? Yes. Off? Yes, off, off, off. Off collecting? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, they've, they're, 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 very, they're very lovely it's people. I mean, it's just <laughs> saying that <laughs> some fa sometimes, even in places that we don't expect, yeah. we can actually find gold. Yes, there's I value. Mean, there's value. There's value even things you don't even expect. I mean, yeah. yes. things like that. So it's not all the time that it's going to be white collar jobs no, and no, things no. like I that. I remember uh, the late Otto Bagarafi said something, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah shit <laughs> business is real business. Yes, it's serious business. <laughs> uh, it? It's serious <laughs> business. The way he said that. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about the challenges of your business. Oh, yeah. Good. So, what are the challenges? Um, or oh, it's been all rosy? No. <laughs> <laughs> Like any business, you're going to face challenges of um, funding. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, you know, you're starting off, you're getting the equipment and, um, you know, you, you inv investments actually. Mm -hmm. You're going to face, um, one of our greatest challenges is that of um, power. Okay. Because um, the power has been, uh, you know, epileptic over some period. Mm -hmm. So we have that challenge as well. Then, of course, you, you face the challenge of skilled labor. So um, some people you have to train for maybe, let's say, two months. Some you have to train for a day mm. before, you know, the grabs what is happening. Yeah. So we, we have um, what you call a shortage of skilled, um, skilled. Uh, you know, people coming through. Okay. So, but the most important thing is that of um, support. Because when people generate waste, yeah. I think, in my, my, my own opinion, they have to be responsible for the waste that they generate. Mm. So when we have um, you train up waste, <laughs> you know, in the dustbin, you don't sort it, the mm. company is churning out waste, then everybody has to join hands together mm. to make the environment a cleaner place. Mm. Good. Oh. All yeah. right, you know, uh, Twitter? it's, well, uh, Twitter, it's, we're having a major block on Twitter at the moment, you know, but we're trying to fix, you know how these networks could be sometimes, but, you know, so talking about uh, the recycling yeah. business, say, if, if uh, th there's one recycling uh, plant over close to after th before Third Mainland Bridge on your way to the mainland, okay, and you know after Third Mainland Bridge coming into the okay. island, you know, and I've seen a couple of students being taken there, okay, for ex for excursions. Uh, what are you doing to tell schools that okay, you know, it's not like supposed to say not just about the white collar job. Bring your students, let's show them how to manufacture something out of waste. Do you do you, do you solicit with schools? teach them about waste management and recycling because that's very very important it's highly important that is something we're looking at starting off this year we actually want to start off um, a csr initiative oh, okay. beautiful by, by our company we want to go around schools we want to tell them about health and safety we want to tell them about um, for example cpr okay. we want to tell them about um, recycling as well okay. you know we we want to we want to tell them so many things 
you know that will impact on their on 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 their training on mm -hmm. you going out there and you know you starting your own business mm -hmm. so we're going to start a csr um later on this year and we're going to be going round um primary schools and secondary schools both mm -hmm. public and private right yes both mm -hmm. public and private fantastic fantastic All right. Thank you. It's oh, been wonderful it's talking to you. Yes. And you. you know, much more than being wonderful, it's actually been very enlightening. Exactly. You know, exactly. I've, I've, I've learned a lot. <laughs> every, every, time I, every time I'm on the program, I learn something new. Yes. So what have, you learned, what have you learned today? Separate the bad bottles from the newspaper exactly. and everything. Exactly. Like right now, I'm going to start storing those bottles. 13 hours for one kilogram. <laughs> <laughs> I know what to do to get millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and all the very best in your future Thank endeavors. You very much. And um, Thank once you. again, I will say we commend your efforts. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank you. It's time for us to go for a break now. And when we come back, we're moving straight to another segment. Please stay with us. What? <laughs> 